Craig, I think the I think the uh, BW two hundred is acting kind of weird. It's it's not it's not right. It's doing something strange. What's it doing? It just feels like it needs, I don't know. It's just not. It feels like it's sick or something like is that. Is it like lethargic? I don't know. A little low but on power. It, it should be fine. We'll come back tomorrow. We'll finish working on this. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow, Craig. Later. Did you see the Rokon? The Rokon's all done. I saw a picture of it. You didn't see the video? Shoot, no. Oh, it's just pretty good. <laughs> Dude, the Rokon looks awesome. Oh, shoot! Oh, no. It had a baby! We, I knew it was something was wrong with it. It was pregnant. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed. Wow, look at it. All oh, right, guys. We know, guy. we know that's not how babies work. You need two bikes to make a baby. And the other bike's not here. But somehow, I was able to find the holy grail of little itty bitty fat tire bikes and that is the uh big wheel 80 yamaha 80 and it's i i didn't know this did you know this but it's a, it's a two-stroke i mean we know that now but yeah. when we first bought it i was like i don't know i don't know what it is it's uh this is every 80 kids dream right here it's so oh, it's so cool it's so cool so we got a couple things for this video we're gonna work on figuring out what, what to deal with our little uh two-stroke 80 cc is and we're also gonna finish some stuff on the uh the other bw 200 craig what, what is this what does this one need uh, right now it's going to need a little brake work here in the back. Does it we, need new brake pads? I don't think it needs new shoes, uh, but I think we have them, so we'll put them on. Kicker's coming. We've got a floppy kicker. This is very simple, isn't it? Maybe clean the carb. Yep. That's it. That's it. Yeah, you might as well put new ones on. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll get that all cleaned up and get this cleaned up. Uh, we got new chains for it. Do we have new outer? No. No. No, we'll just clean it up. Oh, the tire's off. Big old fat tire. I like that. All right, cool. Let's, uh, hold on. Someone's calling me. Nope. Is it a wait, challenge? Wait, hold on. Nope. Jay Leno. All right, so this thing's actually really cool. You want, Let's show them how it works. Let's look over here. You're on off. There's an oil tank. So the oil tank sends, mixes the oil? No, the oil tank just uh, has a line going to the carb. And it's just mixing the oil there. It's right, it's mixing it's the oil inside the car. Yep. Right. Yep. Now, are those good systems or do they often fail? No, they've been pretty solid. I know a lot of the vintage guys still run them if they're intact. They're kind of bulletproof. Uh, you just want to keep an eye on it because if it goes bad, you burn your motor up. Well, how do you know if it goes bad? You burn your motor up. There's no way of knowing <laughs> it went bad. Not really. If your bike starts running really, really good for a little bit, you know it's leaning out and uh, something's up. So just to give you guys an idea of how good of a deal we got on these BWs. I think I got a pretty good deal on this. We paid 800 bucks a piece for the BWs. What did I pay for this? 1600 bucks? Yeah, 15 or 16. 15 or 16. And I thought that was a pretty good deal. Yeah, it was. These things don't exist. They don't make them anymore, obviously. They're really hard to find. Although I only started, I only learned about them like a week before, but now I love them. And now that this video comes out, we kind of, sorry guys, whoever didn't, whoever was looking for one, we kind of ruined it for you. Whoever already has one, you're welcome, because we may have increased the value of them. Just like we did with the Rokon. You can't even see that bolt. Oh, there's no bolt right there. <laughs> Guys, if you were wondering what's going on with the Rokon and haven't seen uh, Robbie Layton's video, uh, they finished it. They finished the Rokon. It is amazing looking. In reality, that Rokon is possibly, n no one has ever spent more time and energy and money on any Rokon ever. So it might be the, and it also might be the most valuable, famous Rokon in existence. I would, I would, if I had to put a value to that Rokon, $100,000. Easy. All right, check this out. Pop the seat open. Here's your little oil tank filled with two stroke oil. Bam. Now, is it normal that these things take a couple kicks to fire them up? Yeah. You want to explain why that is, Craig? Because you don't ride them every day. So it just kind of run the system and get things moving. Oh, that bolt broke off. Yeah, it was like that before. Off. Yeah, it broke off. In Casualties. I mean, this bike has not had the easiest life. No, well, it, it's not bad though. I it's mean, not it, bad. It's not, it's not hammered at all. It's a very good, uh, it just sat outside a little bit. It's a very good contender for being a, uh, maybe a restore. And something, these bikes would be a whole lot easier to restore than the stuff we've been restoring. Craig, fill them up and fill them. Get them up to date with the uh, with the WLA. The WLA. So the WLA is in my shop. It's uh, making huge. Everyone's been asking about the WLA. Where's the WLA? What's happening with the WLA? 
We're making huge progress with the WLA. Yeah, yeah. the tins are uh, in primer. They're uh, gonna be getting ready for paint as soon as we get that all squared away. Uh, I've been working on the wheels and uh, getting it into a roller as I have time. I now know why a lot of people don't true the front wheels of a Harley 45. But yeah, it's it's coming along and it's looking pretty sweet. Did you get did you get it true? No. Is it close? Close. Is it a roller? I don't have the wheel off the stand. Oh. Like it's, yeah, it's, I either want to see if we can talk to Chad if he'll finish it or. What's the actual issue? So you have to, it's spacing, you have to get the hub spaced right. So if your rim's here, you have to get the hub spaced here and also get it true. So it just adds like a third dimension of truing and it's a lot of back and forth and I get it close and then it comes out and they are, uh, they're interesting. You know, first, what we got going on with this? Choke down. What do you, what do you plan on doing, Craig? I'm going to put new chain on. So these run a uh, jack shaft. So there's actually a chain from the counter shaft sprocket back to this jack shaft and then that comes across to the rear sprocket. All right, so you're gonna put new chain on. New chains. Um, supersonic, brakes. supersonic that carb. Yeah, I'm gonna fire it up and see what it's doing. Supersonic the carb, clean things up a little bit. Let's do it. I'm gonna fire this thing up while Craig's working on that. Look, even the tank is actually in pretty good shape. Craig says these old Yamaha tanks, they all start getting all cracked. This one looks really good actually. All right, let's see how many kicks it takes to fire this thing up. Run, on, choke on. Guys, how many kicks do you think it's gonna be? I'm thinking five. I've never really been a big fan of two strokes. So I've always ridden like, like modified ones that are really hard to ride and very characteristically different than four strokes, but I like this. Oh man, this thing is so much fun. If I had something like this when I was a kid, you couldn't get me off of this. It's running good. We'll take it back inside, see if I need to adjust anything. It feels really good, though. This thing runs pretty good. There's one thing I want to do. This thing's a little rattly. all it needed. Craig, I fixed the uh, 80 big wheel if you were wondering. Sweet. Uh, cleaning the brake drum. Smart. Smart. You already did it? Nope. We think a big wheel like that, that 80, would be worth if it was in perfect shape. Perfect OEM Survivor? Yeah. Oh man, um, I think it's, it's less than 10. You know, that's kind of the cool thing about these. Um, we're at a good point where like things are expensive, but they're not that expensive. Like if you if you would have paid 2,000 bucks for that, oh, let's say uh, oh, uh, that, that condition and running, which is that seems like a normal value for the price. It's probably pretty realistic. You can't buy a CRF 50 for that much money. Not a new one. Not a new one. I mean, you can find used ones for you can find used 15, ones. 16. But yeah, those little bikes, they just, man, they bring money. Like this 200 and that 80. I mean, that's right in my wheelhouse from when I was growing up. So, you know, guys relive their childhood. They relive their childhood and they wish they could have bought it back then or they couldn't get it. Now they can get yeah, it. Yeah, right. And this is one of those things that does not disappoint, though. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of things where you're like, man, I wish I, like, I was, you were watching a TV show when you were a kid and you were like, oh, I'm going to watch that show now. And you're like, this is dumb. I was dumb when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. These, you're like, nope, I was right. They're I awesome. I was right. I was so right. This thing's so cool. Also nice and simple. Any Craig, any Craig can work on it. Craig, uh, what are the, what's the percentage of people named Craig who are also uh, mechanics? Uh, I think it's 
14 or 15? That's it. Yeah. It's, thinking, it's, it's getting higher, though. I was thinking 90%. Oh, 90%. Maybe. Oh, shoot. Look how loose that thing is. That thing's crazy loose. Let's tighten that up. No, no, that wasn't going to work. Well, if they're this loose, we might as well just take it off. All right, we'll get this all cleaned up really, really good. Both sides. And we're going to wear gloves while we do it. Now, nothing I do is going to change the performance of these vehicles. That's more of Craig's department. I, just make it, I, I, might, I might just make it look a little bit better. Craig's the guy that actually... They make these gloves one size fits all, which means they fit no one except for, like, Shaq. Well, like, their concern was that, like, the world's tallest man with the world's longest fingers would be, like, give him a bad review, like, hey, man, these gloves don't fit. Meanwhile, they fit no one else actually good. Oh, huge announcement, actually. One of the guys who won the KPM, the KPM 200, there's a fun bike that we, we use in a bunch of videos. Really, really cool bike. He said he wants to give it away. So he's gonna let us give it away. He had some stipulations. We have to give it away to just a subscriber. And I'm cool with that, that sounds awesome. So later this month, keep an eye out for it. We're gonna, give, we're gonna be giving that bike away on a live video to, you don't gotta pay any money. You don't gotta, you don't gotta, you don't gotta buy anything from us. You don't have to support the Kickstarter campaign. You have to do nothing. Just for being on the live stream and a subscriber, you have an opportunity of getting that bike. So last time we peaked at maybe 7,000 people on the live stream. I don't know how many people commented, but that's gonna be happening very soon. So keep an eye out for that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention that real soon exactly when it's gonna happen, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. And we might give some more stuff away too. You never know. Look how clean that looks. Man, that is some next level stuff right there. Look. Yeah, we need a sprayer. As clean as it's gonna get. Hey Dan. Hmm. People, I wanna let you guys know this video is brought to you guys by short shorts. Be like the Australians in no other way. But emulate the way they wear shorts. Short shorts. These are actually too long, actually. I need to show a little more leg. You need to show more quad. A little more quad, yeah. Craig, your shorts a little too long. I'm good. You're not even showing knee. Yeah, I know. I'm coming from a conservative area. Yeah, Mennonite. Craig's not even allowed to show ankle. That's why he wears <laughs> boots. While Craig's doing this, let's go see if we can track down the trifecta. The BW50. All right, let's see if we can find... Ooh, check that out. Porsche 356 speeder kit. Ooh, supercharged, turbocharged. All right, don't get distracted. Yamaha BW350. That's a really nice one. 200 for 3,800 bucks. WR450F with big wheels. That's pretty cool. Street legal, pretty awesome. Let's make my search bigger. 500 miles. BW80, that's awesome. Let's just go to the internet for sale. Why is stuff selling in California? This says this only 2,500 bucks. I almost don't believe it. California, 4,000 bucks. Lake Elsinore. Pretty much in this group. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed there was not some big wheel just sitting like in my local area. Any guys out there, you're hoarding all the big wheel 350s. Let me know if you got one. Oh, I just replaced the chain and put new brake shoes in. Now it's just going to be a matter of getting that all snugged up. Clean up these uh, <whistles> chain guards and then get the rear brake set. And then this one is going to finally have brakes and a new chain. Really doing the big wheel community proud. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Should have had you do it. Yeah, let's see how that works out. Happens if I put it at three, that's going to be too tight. I always grab a piece of towel or rag or something, and I put it here in the sprocket and chain. Dan, yeah. When I tighten the axle, after I get the chain tension set where I like it and everything, I put something like this here and I pull the wheel back. And what that does is that forces the axle and everything front against your stops. And that's how you know you have both sides up against your stops and exactly where you want them. 
I did notice this bike has a lot of weird hardware on it, different odd sizes. Okay, so that's bent. If you see here, I think that'll pull it over. Well, Craig's working on that. We need to build a ramp. See if we have any wood upstairs. Not bad. Do we have any, uh, that might work. For a guy who hates KTM stuff, I sure have a lot of KTM stuff. Awesome KTM umbrella. My once twenty-five or three thousand dollar KTM bicycle that has no kickstand. How are you gonna make a bicycle with no kickstand? It's a good question. I just, I, it, it just lays on the, lays on the side. It's a really cool looking bike though. Thanks for buying these for me, Sean. What did I buy for you? Anything for you, Craig? Nuts and, nuts and bolts kits. Look at what he got me, Dan. Dan, look. Oh. Do you know what we used to find nuts and bolts in? Yes. This. What, you don't like that? And they all, they're all Allens. They're all, you know, it's this quick little Shan. I don't know what Sean's cooking up, but it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be great, I'm excited. Oh, so nice. A flange bolt assortment is my happy place. <laughs> Never really use those a whole lot, but they're kind of fun. Well, that's why I had the 11. Out. We're getting rid of that. It's an 11 head. I'm not dealing with that. Okay, and then after you put that in, then we're done. Yes, we're done. Dan, you ready for a test ride? Ah, I got my, I am. my finger stuck. Wow. Ah, ah. I just know. left it in because I figured it's going to get stuck again, so ah, might as well just do it once. I am ready for a test ride. As you know, I'm a big wheel man now. I'm a big wheel now. 11. Get out of here, 11. No one likes you. 11. Something happened to 11. It's like picking up brass and finding a 380. Somebody's going to get that joke. Okay. Yeah, Craig, first kick. You totally didn't kick it like 50 times. So we're, we're gonna build the world's greatest ramp. We need to go get some parts, so let's do it. Well, now I'll confess, I did hold the uh, the title as a carpenter for about three months until they realized that I had no value as a carpenter, and I got demoted as the lawn care guy. Uh, it was humiliating. It was awful, but. Uh, it led me to you guys. That's why I'm here. I was so proud. I was like, I was, I was like, Dad, I'm a carpenter. You know, I took a couple wood shop classes as a, as a high schooler. I'm like, Dad, I'm a carpenter. And that was probably what kind of kicked me in the butt to go do some other stuff. But let's build an awesome, awesome, amazing ramp. I need to adjust that arm of hair. It's hot out there. It was running okay until it wasn't. What happened? Uh, I think that I found two, uh, I think, vacuum leaks on the carb. I plugged them and it fired right up and was running pretty good. Um, but now it, it died again. The idle screw was backed out all the way. So I added, added some idle screw to it, but. Well, take a break on this. I just made the world's greatest motorcycle ramp. Nice. And we'll go jump the, uh, we'll jump the 80 on it. Can't beat that. Perfect. Craig, you're gonna break it, man. Don't, it's perfect the way it is. It's gonna be great. Jump off here. <laughs> Hit the hit the decline. Who wants to go first? You. All right. Stunt life. Whoa! Yeah! Oh, so high! Where am I landing? Like down here? Yo. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For real? Give it a go, Craig. Show them how we do it. It looks a lot bigger now. Yeah. Come on, Craig, you got this. You let it down there, man. Did I? Yeah, it was awesome. Let me try again.
So we figured out this bike is the best. Subscribe, we'll see you guys next time. And this Friday's video is gonna be insane. Go check it out. And until then, we'll check out this video right here. What if I sit on the back with you and then we just take off? That'd be cool. Right into the sunset, Craig. Yeah.